introduce you to round four of the Faith Exchange. I had a conversation with people about what they wanted, about what was important to them. Called in a few faith leaders. Let's watch round four. Bishop Davis, would you agree that church these days mm -hmm. have become more of a business than a place of worship? Um, and I ask I that because I have a good friend of mine mm -hmm. who right now refuses to mm -hmm. go to church sure. um, because of bad experiences, mm -hmm. um, feels as though the church is nothing but a, a, a business, talking about each other, mm -hmm. women judging other women by the dress that they have on, the design of purse that they have in their sure. hand, sure. which you kind of take, everyone, that may happen, mm -hmm. but you're not there for that. Sure. And that's what I have to remind him. You are not there to talk about what type of shoes someone has on. You're there to get a word. You're there to get your spirit fed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, is it true that maybe that some of these churches have become more of a business than a, a solid place of worship? Um, I, say, I say yes and no. I, I think it's, that's very true. The reality is, is that churches that are going to succeed, now, what I mean by succeed is that they're going to grow, you're going to reach out to the community to do anything. You have to, there's a business element to it. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to pay bills, you've got to make sure your legal affairs are in order. So there's a business element to it. But a, a church can handle the business aspects without becoming corporate and cold. And so when people start saying that, you know, feel like churches have just become a business, and what they're really saying is, I, don't, I feel like the church has lost its personal touch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can have a church that is not, you know, overly corporate and still have all the same problems you just mentioned, because those are really two different things. What you just mentioned about, you know, being more concerned about the dress code mm -hmm. and purses and all that, what that really boils down to is that folks within in the church have lost their focus about what this is really about. And that starts from the head. You know, um, you know, about seven years ago, um, we, ma we made a commitment. You know, I, I, was, I looked at our church and I said, you know what, when I, when I was reading scriptures, I, I noticed in the life of Jesus, there were prostitutes that followed his ministry. There were tax collectors who were considered sinners that were constantly at his meetings. He, he would have lunch, meet, lunch meetings with folks that weren't always the, the, the top of the rung. And I realized that's not how I am right now. I wasn't wired like that. It wasn't intentional. But I think I had just, just the way in which our church was, was structured. You know, we were, we, we've always been considered, you know, kind of formal and, and, and making sure we're trying to be pretty buttoned up. And I just realized that if somebody really came in here, you know, straight off the street with real issues, I don't know if they'd feel comfortable. I don't know if they'd feel comfortable in the church. I don't know if they'd feel comfortable out to lunch with me as a pastor at that time. And so I just made a commitment. We were going to change that. You know, we we're going to kind of kill this whole rock star preacher mentality mm -hmm. in our church. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I did is I sent our outreach team out to go knock on doors. And they knocked on doors. Old fashioned way. And but what they knocked on doors is, is asking a, two, one question. Number one question was, do you go to church? If the f person said yes, I do, they thanked them and moved on. If they said no, I don't go to church. The next question was, why don't you go to church? And overwhelmingly, the answer we got back is that so many people said that they didn't go to church because they felt judged. Why? Well, you were right. And they felt. Always that, right, Rabbi. <laughs> I'd still be married if I do that. Yeah, yeah, right. And they said the number one reason they felt judged, though, is because they didn't have the right clothes to wear and, and all that stuff. And so we said if, if that's the, one of the main reasons, these are unsaved people that we're asking this question. They don't go to church. So we made a commitment then. We changed our dress code. Wow. So I, I stopped wearing suits every Sunday. I, honestly, most Sundays I'm dressed just like this, a pair of jeans. Uh, you, you think know. that's changed much? Well, what it did, a couple things it did. Number one is if somebody came in from the outside and they didn't have the clothes, then you, they didn't look like they stood out. We had always said, come as you are. But as long as the pastor was dressed up and I had on suits the whole time, as long as my whole staff had on suits, mm -hmm. nobody, you know, the rest of the church wants to, you know, make sure they're at least at the average of what. So you'd always have some people yeah. casual, but you'd always have most people that were still as dressed up as we are. So once we became more relaxed for the purpose of making sure that if somebody came in from the outside that wasn't already church, that they would feel comfortable. They, they would look around and they wouldn't stand out as if they were an oddball. We were amazed to see how that subtle change started to also have an intellectual change. Where I think we started as a church looking at folks differently. Stop looking at as if, and I, and I, and I want to say we've always been a very friendly church. But even as a friendly church, we still had, and to this day still have, some barriers that we've had to overcome so that somebody coming in that doesn't know Christ can feel comfortable coming in. And like I said earlier, you know, so many times I think we made a bigger deal about earrings and tattoos and a lot of the external things than slowing down long enough to take time to find out the heart of the person coming in. Mm -hmm. Actually, he was one of my rabbis. So funny. <laughs> oh, you caught me talking. Okay, stick around because when we come back, Bonnie Soloway joins us for a quick 
message. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back.